What is up, Internet? I'm the nice one, and today, I don't have a character modeling video for you. Nani? This time, we're talking about environmental sculpting and live texture painting. So sit back, relax, and let me make the mistakes for you. My idea was to create a map for the characters I've been creating so that when I play out a scene, it's in context of the environment, as opposed to being in that infinite white background. Going into the project, I knew that I couldn't use my normal low-poly character modeling techniques, because landscapes have a much more asymmetrical topology to them. So that's why I started looking into the sculpting feature of Blender. Most of the tutorials I found were focused around high-poly character sculpting, but some of the overall concepts could be translated to other types of models, like environments and environmental assets. So you see that I'm starting with a low-poly icosphere. I wanted to create a floating island look, similar to what you see in games like Dauntless and League. Using the icosphere as a base, I whipped out my earth bending scales and started terraforming the basic landmass, punching out the general shapes of where I want specific land features to be, like the mountain and the river. That's a pretty common technique across all kinds of modeling practices, both digitally and analog. Start with a basic shape, punch out the rough idea, and then sculpt in the detail incrementally. Once I was done, I started adding in the details using Blender's texture painting tool. I found this easier than bringing the UV map into Photoshop because you can project the texture onto the model as you paint, so you know in real time how the texture is working with the model, the lighting, and everything else you've set up. One problem I came across with texture painting was that some parts of the model would stay black because the brush couldn't reach the UV face. I think this was because there were a lot more edge faces in this model, so a straight poly or a bad UV wrap may have been blocking the brush from reaching the area. A quick fix for this is to go into paint mode in the UV port and just add in the texture directly onto the UV map, save out the image, and then reload in Blender. After everything was textured, I still felt the environment was pretty boring. There was no focus point or a set piece to the map. So I tapped into the power of God and anime and did what any RPG fan would do. Arbitrarily add mysterious crying faces into the mountain because it looks cool as shit. Again, using the icosphere and the symmetry function in the draw brush, I started sculpting out the face of a young ruler, adding in the crown directly onto his head as if he was being carved from one piece of the mountain. I think the face was a great addition to the environment because it brought this fantasy element to an otherwise boring map. A sense of history and lore which I think will be really cool to explore in my coming animated short films. Once I was done carving out the face and pretending to be top, boom, you've got yourself a simple low poly landmass. Throw in some great lighting, you're good to go. Next up, you'll see how I made some of the environmental assets, like some ruins, an arena, and a bit of that red leaf forest. Until then, internet, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, and as always, I hope you liked the video, I'll talk to you later, have a nice night.